I lose all gauges and it quits. And sometimes the security light will come on and won't let me start it. Sometimes it'll just let me start it again, but it kind of runs rough and then runs again, then quits. All the gauges are dead. Nothing comes up. And this is what it does. It just sits and cranks. As you can see, no gauges. Also notice the key light stays on also when it does this. All the gauges are dead. So if you have a Jeep WJ or a Chrysler product, you probably know what these are. This is a chipped key, right? So this key is programmed to this Jeep and uh, this has the skim unit in place. It's a security system. I've seen people break off their key and can't start their Jeep because they have an Ace Hardware metal key. I've seen people just touch it to the ring and use the metal key and turn it. Now this Jeep had another computer put in it from the junkyard and they programmed this key to it. And I have the original key that no longer works. It's for the computer wherever it is nowadays. This key would not work in this Jeep. It would kick on the key light. That means it's the wrong key. Um, but this key always worked. The black ring around it reads the chip in the key and it starts the vehicle. It's like a security system. They call it the skim unit. And today that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be bypassing the skim unit and it's going to cost you a little bit of money, but not, uh, not that much. If you have some extra cash laying, cash laying around, it's worth it. Now, if your Jeep is shutting off down the road and it uh, pops up the key, um, it won't let you start it. Um, if the door wiring goes bad or any little thing that goes bad in this Jeep, it will cause the key light to come on and it won't start. Uh, your crank position sensor could go bad and the key light could come on. Your O2 sensor could go bad. The key light could come on. That's all in a big circuit. And if anything grounds out, the key light will kick on. Well, it's hard to diagnose what the problem is if a key light's always kicking on and you can't do anything. It's because it locks you clear out. The gauges go dead. Or sometimes it does that and your PCM goes bad. But today I'm just going to show you how to bypass the skim unit because I hate it. And I just, uh, if I'd have one of these Jeeps right off the bat, I'd get another PCM um, and remove the skim unit because it's nice not having to have the chip. But today I'm going to show you how to bypass that. So get your tools ready. You're going to need a 10 millimeter, a Phillips, and a Torx bit. I'll leave the tools in the description below so this make, uh, make the job a little bit easier. This is pretty straightforward if you know how to work on vehicles and unbolt stuff. So let's get right into it. Before you touch anything, take the battery terminals off and shut the hood. Get a Phillips and there's going to be a bolt up in here. Just want to go ahead and undo that. It'll look like this. From the side, you just pull down. Here is your skim unit. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. There's a tab up here that you push. Just push it, it comes out. With the T15 Torx bit, there's a bolt right here. You just undo it, just one holding it. And after you get the bolt out, pry this over and kind of grab this like this. It should pop out. And this is your skim unit. This um, is program to your PCM and this is what shuts down your Jeep if something goes wrong or somebody's trying to steal it or if you put the wrong key in it'll run for five seconds and shut off so just lay this right here for right now let's get under the hood I'm gonna take out your battery it's over there there's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt there 10 millimeter nut there and you want to take your hands Sensor, battery sensor. Go ahead and unplug that. And this thing should be free. It's gonna be 10 millimeter bolt here, 10 millimeter bolt here, 
10 millimeter bolt here. After you get that done, you wanna unplug this. And this should just pull right up out. Just lay it over here. Gonna have a 10 millimeter nut here. A 10 millimeter nut here for the TCM. After you get those two bolts out, you just grab this, pull up, lay it aside. This reveals your PCM. I take this nut out, this nut, and then there's a bolt under here that I started to get out. It's underneath. Then before you unbolt it, just go ahead and unplug it. Then I'm going to go ahead and take these bolts out, or these bolts out. Then you just pull out, pull up. These may differ in size, but you need to get a Torx bit. Undo the ground, and this will come off the bracket. And you screw the other one on the bracket and reverse everything you just done. <laughs> Don't forget to put your sensor back in. basically all you do so i'm just going to throw this key over in the corner i'm not, I'm not going to need it i can still use it i'm going to use these keys that don't work right so uh let's go ahead and fire it up and see what it does this key should actually start the jeep so it powers up everything's good and it starts now here's the catch this light's going to kick on here in a minute because your computer's looking for your skim unit. Let's give it some time. It should come on. There it is. Now you notice my Jeep isn't quitting. Now all I have to do is take the bulb out of the cluster, which I have a video on that. You can go back on my channel and watch how to take a cluster out. As you've seen, I, I, I bypassed the skim unit in this vehicle and i'm going to explain to you how i done it and how much it cost now a computer cost me around 200 and from anywhere from 219 to 260 bucks you need to get it flashed and you need to get your vin number put in that computer in the exact mileage and then all you got to do is do the steps that i showed you but when i ordered this computer i made a side note to them i said hey make sure you leave the skim laying dormant don't activate it which i think every pcm that's been flashed with the new vin I, I think it always lays dormant because that's how these pcms work once the pcm reads the skim right here it activates it once it does that you need a chip key and then you're going to have to always have a chip key you got to use the original key which i don't have to use anymore but i did away with this so basically that's all you got to do so let me clear this up there's a lot of garbage online that get you confused people say you got to change the key cylinder and all this stuff they they tell you got to change like all kinds of stuff just pull this out order a pcm tell me you want the skim disabled you really can't disable just tell me you want the skim deleted they'll know what you're talking about get the computer make sure you take this out before you even plug the computer in before you even do anything just leave the the jeep uh, what, what I did was I had the Jeep apart waiting for the computer. No power to it for a week, and I got the computer. Because once you plug that battery in with that computer in, and if it recognizes the skim, it's locked in, and you have to use your chip key. But that's how I bypassed it. Just got a PCM, took this out, put it back together, put the battery in, started it as you've seen, and I drove it. That's how you bypass the skim unit. It's pretty self-explanatory. 
you got to dish out a little bit of money other than that it's pretty uh pretty awesome i thought i'd make a video on it because nobody makes videos on it and explains this show a really crappy video and then you ask questions and never answer you back you can ask questions in the comments below i'm cherokee ronnie stay dirty my friends